Welcome to the 2020 cross country season. This video is part two of a read through of the expectations and operating procedures for this upcoming season. The focus for this season, simply learn, compete, have fun. The process of learning how to master the physical and mental skills required to compete in cross country are not only important to athletes this season, but are actually a prerequisite to future success in life. The road to success in sport and life requires that athletes develop a passion for hard work. We seek to foster that passion by creating a challenging, positive, and fun environment that offers the camaraderie of teammates and the guidance and support of coaches that will ultimately benefit all athletes, regardless where their path in life takes them. Through a positive approach that focuses on the team, we aim to cre create lifelong memories with the following fun activities. First, and most importantly, racing, competition opportunities, cross-country camp, waffle runs, scavenger hunts, post-practice cool treats, summer destination runs, team bonding activities, dessert night run, which will be held August 7th, partner relays, which will be held August 15th, and pasta parties, if we're able to, which will be held Thursday night before a weekend race. For those of you new to Cross Country, please check out this link right here, Cross Country 101. The coaching staff this year is Ross Hartley, Chrissy Rogerson, Jim Green. I'm Ross Hartley, and I'm the head coach. Please check out these links right here for my coaching philosophy, training philosophy, um, and let me know what questions you have about that. Communication. Every week, a weekly update will be emailed out through Final Forms. This will include practice start and end times, as well as locations. Right here is my contact information. Please let me know what questions you have. Expectations. Be prepared. Fuel. Food and hydration. This is the gasoline for your actions. Quantity and quality are key. Input shapes output. Bring a water bottle to all practices, as the outdoor water fountains can't always be counted on. I recommend taking a multivitamin daily, one with calcium. Along with this, getting blood work done regularly to check iron levels is extremely important, especially for female athletes. Eating a quality meal or snack within one hour of finishing practice, carbs and protein. This will help with the recovery process. Clothes, appropriate for the weather and the situation. Shirts must be on at all times. Granville attire must be worn at all competitions. Must be prepared with shoes and spikes, a watch, and mentally prepared. We are positive hard workers. Be positive in thoughts, words, actions. We have a positive team culture, which is embodied by all athletes and coaches. Positivity is an expectation for all athletes in all practices and all meets. Be persevering. Find an answer, not an excuse. Yes, we do expect you to work hard and give effort. Make it work, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what obstacle. Adapt and overcome. No walking, unless prescribed as a part of the workout. No crying. Project on the outside how you want to feel on the inside. This is a great life skill that will serve you well above and beyond this season. What you do in practice is what you do during competition. We do not cry during competition. Practice habits lead to competition habits, lead to competition results. When you show weakness, it lets the outside world, opponents know that you are hurting and that you are surviving and no longer racing. As Coach Smith would say, put on your poker face. If athletes walk and or cry during training or a race, that is a sign to the coaches that the stress of training and or racing is too much. Because of this, athletes will take a break from competing in races and possibly training. Most importantly, safety. Never run by yourself. Follow all traffic laws. No headphones while running. Hit the crosswalk crossing button at all road crossings. Look both ways before crossing the road and look out for your teammates. Athletes must make eye contact with drivers before stepping off the curb into the road. Just because you have the right of way does not mean that they see you. Avoid running on the road unless prescribed. Find a sidewalk, path, 
grass. If you do run on the road, run on the left side of the road, stay as far left as possible, and you must be single file. Ask questions if you are not sure where you are going or what the workout is. How to make the team. We will have tryouts for the team on the first day of mandatory practice, August 3rd. This will take place at the new high school track. That's plan A. Plan B, the bike path, if the high school track is not finished. And plan C is the Brindu polo fields. To make the team, the following time standards are in place. Boys must run under 16 minutes for two miles. Girls must run under 17 minutes for two miles. If athletes are injured during this time trial period, they can complete the time trial once cleared by their health care professional. If athletes are out of town during this time trial period, they can complete the time trial once back in town. If athletes walk or cry during this time trial, then that is a sign to the coaching staff that being a part of this team is too much physical and mental stress, and they will not be able to join the team. If an athlete decides to join the team after August 3rd, they must successfully complete the time trial on their first day of joining. Consideration will be given for athletes based on past racing times and optional conditioning attendance, work ethic, and attitude. How do athletes prepare themselves for this time trial? By coming as often as possible to optional summer conditioning. These are purposefully and progressively planned to prepare athletes for this and the upcoming season. Why are we doing this? First and foremost, it's for the safety of athletes. With practices taking place off school grounds and some athletes running under five minutes a mile and others running at a slower pace, we have to ensure athlete safety. The majority of sports at Granville High School have a tryout requirement for joining the team. This team has a high standard in all that it does. This is not a club sport, but a varsity sport. Coaches make athletes earn a spot because athletes will take more pride and ownership of opportunities they have to work hard for and earn. Your standards are what you demand or tolerate. High achievement always takes place in the framework of high standards. Practices. Optional conditioning will take place in June and July. These are every weekday morning at various spots around Granville and Licking County. These are not mandatory, but highly encouraged as these are purposefully and progressively planned to prepare athletes for the upcoming season. Practice time and locations will be communicated in the weekly update via final forms, Official practice begins August 3rd. This is when mandatory attendance begins. Our attendance policy, five total permissible absences, three excused, two unexcused. Excused absences examples, other school commitments, healthcare appointment. You need to let Coach Hartley know via email or text before practice that you will not be able to attend and the reason why. If you are at school, you are expected to be at practice. Same season, two sport athletes. Due to the physical and mental toll it will take to compete in cross country and another school sport in the fall season, athletes must completely commit to cross country as their fall sport. We do not allow same season, two sport athletes. Below is our competition schedule. Some athletes will end their season at the LCL Championships on October 17th. The varsity athletes, top seven individuals, and alternates will compete for as long as they qualify for the next round of competition, district, regional, state, nationals. For an explanation of who runs and what meets and the differences, please check out this link right here. Important dates. August 3rd, first official practice. Mandatory attendance begins. August 7th, dessert night run. August 15th, partner relays at Infirmary Mound Park. August 19th, it's the first day of school. And November 12th, that is our team banquet. Varsity lettering. 
we have new varsity lettering standards for the upcoming season. Boys must run 1759 or faster for a 5K race. Girls must run 2059 or faster for a 5K race or compete at a district, regional, or state competition. Equipment list. Shoes. Shoes are the best injury prevention. We recommend shopping local to get the best type for your foot and fit. Another good practice is to have two or three pairs of shoes to rotate through. Several local run stores. Columbus Running Company. They've got locations in Pickerington, Dublin, Westerville, Short North, and Powell. Fleet Feet and Second Soul. If you tell any of the stores that you are a high school athlete, they should give you a discount. This link right here, what shoe to buy, goes on to explain the different types of shoes and who they benefit the most. Spikes. Again, we recommend shopping local to get the best type for your event, foot type, and fit. Digital watch. This is a requirement. Every athlete must have a watch for every practice. This is required for distance runners. A GPS watch is a great investment that will serve you well during this and future seasons. A GPS watch is not required, just a digital watch. Be prepared to run in all weather. Unless athlete safety is at risk, we will have practice regardless of weather. A water bottle is highly encouraged. Training log. One common trait amongst all the best runners is the fact that they keep a running journal or log. Not only does journaling your runs help you take more ownership of your training by reflecting on workouts, this also helps me be a better coach for you. This is not mandatory or a requirement, just another opportunity to add another tool to your tool belt and to help me best help you. My primary goal is for you to reflect on your training. If you would like to share these reflections with me, I will read them, but also understand if you want to keep this private. There are numerous ways to do this, both structured and unstructured. Strava. This is for athletes with GPS watches. After creating an account and syncing your watch, athletes can upload their workouts to this platform. Athletes must have their profiles on private for safety reasons. When writing a description about the run, only positive comments. If you had a bad day or an ache or a pain, do not post this on this platform. Leave the description blank if you have nothing positive to say about the run. Please come talk to a coach in person about this. Please add me so that I can see your training, Ross Hartley. And we have a Strava group exclusively for Granville Cross Country. Please ask to join Granville Elite. Another option is a Google Doc. Make a copy of this Google Doc for each week. Share with me, our Hartley coach at granvilleschools.org, if you would like for me to see. And finally, notebook and pen. As an athlete, this was my preferred method. Recovery and aches. As coaches, we see you for at most two hours of the day. A lot of the success that you will or will not have will be determined by how you spend the other 22 hours of every day. As with anything in life, everything is built on top of the basics of being properly fueled, hydration and fuel, and being well rested. Sleep is the number one legal performance enhancer. Steve Rose is our athletic trainer and the absolute best in the business. He is the trainer for all 20 plus sports at Granville High School. To reduce the amount of athletes in the training room at one time, you must talk to a coach before going to the training room. Athletes are not allowed to visit the training room without first consulting a coach. As much as you stress yourself, both physically and mentally, with training and life, you have to rest an equal, if not more amount, so that you are able to recover and stress yourself again. What does this stress and recovery look like as a high school cross country slash track athlete? Please read through there what that looks like. The more you communicate with the coaches, 
the better chance we have to help alleviate any possible injuries from forming. Eat, hydrate, sleep, and talk with your coaches. Injury flowchart. Unfortunately, injuries can and do happen with the sport of distance running. When this does happen, the most important thing to do is what the doctor prescribes. The steps below have been developed to best help injured athletes recover as po quickly as possible. As always, the more communication you have with coaches, the better we can help you. Physical aches and pains and soreness, tightness, should be expected with the sport of distance running. When do you know that an ache or a pain might turn into an injury? Three plus days of unrelenting or increasing pain, or if your running form is compromised. If you wore a boot or used crutches at any point during the day, then the best thing you can do is go home after school and rest. You are not allowed to be at practice with the team. You need to rest and recover. This includes team lifting and yoga sessions. You need to allow your injury to quickly and fully heal. This is best done at home. If you did not wear a boot or use crutches at any point during the day, choose an option from the cross-training library workouts only if the doctor has approved this. Or if the doctor, PT, or trainer has prescribed other things for you to do, awesome, complete those. Or go home after school and rest. By resting, you are allowing your injury to quickly and fully heal. If you are not able to run the day before a competition due to aches, pains, then you will not be running in the competition the next day. The stress of racing is currently too much, and the best course of action for you to take to be healthy is to rest. Down below here are extra resources for you to check out. Please let me know what questions you have and how I can best support your student athletes. Thank you.